Hey guys, this is Genevieve. In this video, we're going to learn how to draw a watercolor citrus slice in Procreate. In this tutorial, I am going to be using the watercolor brushes in the pre-textured watercolor file from my watercolor toolbox, which I'll link in the description below. However, you can still follow along with different brushes because I'm going to be teaching a few tips and tricks that you can use to improve your Procreate drawing workflow. So make sure you stick around until the end so you don't miss any of those. First thing we're going to do is we're going to hide the example so we have some space to draw and create a brand new layer. You're going to select the color you want your citrus to be. So if you want orange, you're going to select orange. If you want a lemon, you're going to select yellow. You get the point. <laughs> so I'm going to go with orange. And then you're going to go, if you have the watercolor toolbox, you're going to select the dark edges watercolor. And again, on your new layer, you're just going to draw I'm going to go with the biggest size. There you go. I'm just going to draw a circle that you're going to color in. It doesn't have to be perfect, quite the opposite. Um, but you want to have some sort of a shape that resembles a circle or an ellipse. And there you go. That was honestly the hardest part of this entire tutorial. <laughs> Now we're going to select the eraser and we're going to create the different individual pieces of the orange. So start by, oh that's way too big. <laughs> start by a vertical line here in the middle. If you hold your pencil at the end, the line is going to create a straight line. But it might not be the best thing to do actually here because we're drawing something that is organic. So no need to be perfect. The only thing you want is to make sure that the lines kind of intersect in the middle. There we go. You know, this is something that is a bit too straight that has too nice of angles for an organic shape. So what I like to do is um, erase some sort of inverted V's here near the edges real quick. Doesn't have to be fancy. And something like this in the middle, too. Great. It's already looking pretty good. If you have the watercolor toolbox, you're going to go select the water drag brush, which is a brush that doesn't have any color to it, but it's allowing you to move the colors around. Um, and if you don't have it, you can use this tool here, but I would recommend a water drag. And you just going around the edges here and at the top and moving the color around towards the inside. And that what it does is basically just makes your edges a bit smoother and more realistic because again we're trying to get something that looks watercolory. And the eraser tool has really straight edges. So having this water blender allows you to have a shape that is more natural. Fantastic! So now we're going to learn the first trick that I'm going to teach you today. And this is how to use masks in Procreate, or what are masks um, at all. So in your layer panel, you are going to create a new layer. And then you're going to select the layer that on which you drew your basic shapes here. And you're going to click on it again and make a selection out of it. Now you're going to click back on the new layer you cre created tap on it a second time and go and click on mask. And you're going to see it's going to add something that looks like a layer on top, but is not actually quite a layer. It has an inverted version of what you selected. And what that means basically is everything that is in black, your color is not going to show up on there. So it's only going to show up in the white little sections. Make sure that you have the layer selected and not the layer mask. Click on it and I'm going to show you real quick what it actually does. I go ahead and dislike this on the top. I'm going to select a bright green just so you can see. Um, I'm going to go back to dark edges watercolor and see if I draw 
the green stays within the shapes. So you could do that um, on a regular layer, but then you would have to like erase everything. It would take forever. So having a mask allows you to draw in a specific section without having to erase all the time. I don't want this green thing, so I'm just go ahead and clear the layer. <laughs> but I'm gonna keep this setup that we have. And I'm gonna go pick a dark red orangey color and select the color shifting blushes brush. And now I'm gonna teach you about the second trick, which is how to use symmetry. Because what I want now is to add textures in all these little sections, but that was that would take forever if I was gonna do it one by one. There is a way to just mirror it. So go ahead here in this tool section in Canvas and you're gonna activate Drawing Guide, which is gonna let you activate the Edit Drawing Guide uh, menu. And you see you have a bun bunch of options here in the bottom. You are going to wanna use Symmetry. And these two options here just show you how um, the guides look on your screen. They're not gonna affect the final result. What is going to affect the final result is what you select here in the options. So you have a bunch of different symmetry options. You can go with vertical, horizontal, quadrant, quadrants, sorry, or radial. In this case, we want radial. We want to make sure that rotational symmetry is activated and that S to draw is activated too. And you want to move your center towards the center of your orange. Oops, it doesn't have to be perfectly in the center, just kind of centered. And then you're going to click done. And if you go back to your layers, you're going to see that the layer you had selected now has this assisted label on it. If it doesn't show up for some reason, just click on the layer and uh, select Drawing Assist right here. And now if I draw on my layer, you see that what I draw in one of these sections, one of these triangles, is just repeating all over the place. So go ahead and add some darker little elements towards the top, or in this case I'm drawing on the bottom, but you know, towards this area of, of the shape. Really quickly and easy. That's it. And go ahead and create a new layer and we're gonna practice what we just did because we want to have again a layer that has a mask with that shape. So click on the layer with the basic shape that you want. Click select, go back to your new layer, add a mask. You can deselect, go to, your, go to your layer, click on it, and select drawing assist. That was it. Now we're gonna go and add some lights and little elements that make it look like, like there is pulp within the orange or citrus. So go with, you could go with straight white actually. And you're going to select a smaller brushes. For this, I'm going to use the coloring pencil. And you're just going to draw a bit too small. You're just going to draw squiggles, making sure you go over the entire orange section. And that making sure as well that you don't have too many angles. You want something that is organic and flowy. Now we're going to make this layer blend differently with the colors below it because right now you can see it's just on normal that's what this little n means but we're going to affect the way it blends with the color below it by using the blending modes this is a bit more of an advanced feature so i could do a different tutorial if you are interested in it but in this case just go and select color dodge <laughs> or maybe add no color dodge these squiggles look cool, but they look a bit too squiggly. So what I'm gonna do is blend them by using the Gaussian Blur, so in the Adjustment panel, Gaussian Blur. And I'm gonna adjust the intensity of the blur by sliding my fingers from left to right. So see if I go to the right, it's gonna be 100%, and to the left, it's gonna be 0%. In this case, I want something around six or five, somewhere in between there. And now if we go and hide a layer and put it back up, we can see that we have cool little textures. Awesome. Next trick I'm gonna show you is how to have really easy gradients in your piece. For that, we're gonna to have to merge all the layers that we've created. 
And to merge layers in Procreate, it's really easy. You just take your fingers and squish them together. That's it. With your layer selected, you're going to go take the selection tool here at the top, freehand, and you're going to draw a quick circle in the middle. The shape doesn't really matter. And you're going to feather it somewhere between, uh, somewhere around 30 and 40, doesn't really matter that much. And with the selection still activated, go to the adjustment panel, select hue, saturation, and brightness, and you're going to play around and see now I'm going to create this really cool gradient in the middle by lifting up the brightness. I can lift up the saturation and I can even affect the hue to have something that is a bit more yellow in the middle. Now if I deactivate my selection, you see you have a really cool gradient that took you only seconds to do. You can create many of them if you want to have different types of... Oop, I forgot to feather it. <laughs> That's an important part. If you want to have different effects, you can just go around and play with it. Cool. You can also add just a really crazy little selection here. Feather it. I'm not going to forget it this time. <laughs> and literally change the hue to have some sort of funky accents in there if you want to have some pink or something. And see that it looks really cool. That looks more natural actually. Now that we have this, uh, go ahead and uh, hide the drawing guide, oops, just so we have a better idea of what the piece looks like. And we're going to use one of the brushes that I, honestly, I think it's my favorite one from the watercolor toolbox. It's the salt brush. And it's meant to mimic the effect that salt has on watercolor. So this brush doesn't have any color to it. It doesn't matter the color that is selected. All that matters is that you draw from the outside, so from a transparent section or a white section, towards the color. And you see it's a bit small. It adds the little speckles that you would get by using salt. I'm not going to go crazy and add it all over the piece, otherwise it looks just oops, it looks a bit wild. But in one section, it's really cool. I'm also going to add some splatters, which are kind of the opposite. <laughs> and for this brush, you need to select a color. Okay, and same thing, I don't want to add it all over the place. But it, it does look cool and kind of, especially with a citrus slice, makes it look fresh and vibrant and juicy. Now the only thing we are missing is um, the peel. So go ahead and create a new layer and select again the dark edges watercolor, not as big this time, maybe a middle size and uh, maybe more than middle size <laughs> or maybe not. And you're just going to draw short little strokes. Oops, I switched to the eraser. So short little strokes all around to create the orange peel. And don't worry too much about it if it has overlaps and funky shapes. That's really cool because remind uh, remember we're doing watercolor of an organic shape so there's two reasons for it not to be perfect. <laughs> Great, and if you're really not happy with it, you can always use the selection tool, use distort and kind of move it around if you really went crazy and did something that you just don't like. So there's always this option. Now that you have a circle that you're happy with, we're just going to blend the inside so it looks more realistic. So go ahead and select water drag or water blender actually. And with a medium size, just go and drag the color around on the inside only. So you want to keep really sharp edge edges on the exterior, but you want to blend the color inside.
Isn't that cool? You can then play around. Sometimes I like to duplicate this layer just so I can turn it around and see if I like that. You know, kind of doubling effect that you can get. Lowering the opacity. But in this case, I think I like it with just a single, single one. We are almost done. The last step that I'm going to do is boost the contrast in this piece a little bit. By selecting the layer, going back to the adjustment panel, and selecting the curves. And the way the curves work, basically, is the bottom section here controls the dark colors and the top section here controls the lighter colors. So if I want more contrast, I want my light colors to be lighter and my dark colors to be darker. So I'm going to create a new point by just clicking on it and lifting the lighter color. That's way too much, but you know, you see what I'm doing. And create a point here at the bottom and make my darker color darker. And see, if we undo by tapping on the screen with two fingers, we can see the difference that we have. Now we have so much co uh, contrast. You can also see that it affects the saturation. So if it made your piece too bright, you can always go to adjustment, hue saturation, and play with the saturation itself here. So there you go, you created your own orange slice or citrus slice in Procreate. If you wanna have just half a slice, really easy, just merge them all together. In this case, I'm gonna duplicate it so I don't lose it and just Take the selection tool, go in the middle, select, clear, and you can erase it just so it's not as sharp. And you would have just half a slice of orange or citrus. So there you go, you have your own watercolor orange or citrus slice that you've created entirely in Procreate. And I would love to see your creation. So tag me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter if you do use this tutorial. And if you have any idea for a tutorial you would like to see, just uh, write it in comments below and I'll make sure to read it. And finally, I'm going to link the watercolor toolbox in the description below if you want to check out the brushes that I've used in this video. And otherwise, see you soon.